Well, for those of you who can hear, it is certainly good to, to have us together today and to, to, uh, to share some time together. And I, I mentioned to Mark earlier, I was, I was a little bit taken aback by his question as to what kind of sermon you want, because you're going to get what you get regardless of what you want. So, you know. Uh, I, what I want us to do, though, today, I, I want us to go camping today. Okay, I want us to, I want us to just to envision this, this moment of camping. I, your neighbor, okay, let's just go together in this, down this little path of imagination. Your neighbor is an avid camper every weekend. Your neighbor loads up his truck and heads out camping. And every weekend, he knocks on your door. Hey, I'm going camping. You want to go? No, nah, I don't think so, but thanks for the offer. Next weekend, you see your neighbor loading up his, his truck and he yells, hey, you want to go camping? No, nah, I don't think so. I'm, I'm going to pass. This goes on for months and months till finally one weekend you say, okay, I'll go camping with you. So you spend the weekend camping and it is the greatest thing you've ever experienced. And you think, how did I go so long without being a part of this, but enjoying this, this camping. I, this, is, this is great. And so the first thing you do is you run to the bookstore and you buy a book. It says Camping for Dummies. And you start reading about camping and you, and you want to learn what you can. And so the next week your neighbor says, hey, you want to go camping? Yes, I want to go. I'm looking so forward to this. And so you load up in the truck and you go camping again. And so you get back and you think, now I've got to get another book. So now you go buy two or three more books about camping. And so now you're collecting this camping library. And every weekend, your neighbor says, you want to go camping? You say, yes, I would love to go. And so this goes on for a few weeks and then one day you come home and you notice a stack of stuff in your driveway. You think, what in the world is this about? And so you, you open up the package and it is all brand new camping gear. And you go down the list in the book of, of, of Camping for Dummies of all the stuff you need to go camping. And every item on the list is in the stack. You think, wow, this is fantastic. And your neighbor comes out and says, do you like that? And he says, yes, I love it. It's wonderful. And he says, well, I thought it was about time for you to have some of your own gear. You know, I, I want you to be able to enjoy camping to its fullest. And so I wanted to just give this to you as a gift. You say, but this must have cost a fortune. I mean, I, he said, the cost is irrelevant. I want you to have this. I want you to have this for yourself. This is my gift to you. Are you sure? Yes. Well, why? He says, because you're my neighbor and you're important to me. And I love you and I love your enthusiasm about camping and I want you to be able to enjoy this. And you just so... And you, the, the, the gratefulness is just incredible. And you just, you can't get over how, how gracious and generous this gift has been. And you're so excited. So now you go in the house and you get online and you, and you get on the, the, this Facebook, Facebook group for campers. And you join this Facebook camping group. And now about three or four times a week, you log on and you talk about camping with other people who love camping. And you sit down and you read your books about camping. And you're just so enthused and everything is so wonderful until you get to the last part of the book about camping. Now remember, I mean, you have all the stuff. You have the... The, the six-man, two-room tent, you have the cook stove, you have the collapsible table, you have the coolers, the canteens, the lanterns, and Bob could give you a list of about a mile long of other stuff you have to have. Your sleeping bags and your little cooking utensils and your coffee pots, everything you can imagine, you've got it. 
You think, man, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm so excited. You tell everybody on your, your Facebook camping group that you've, you're all set up and you've been doing your reading and now you're ready to go out and go camping on your own. And you got thought, but before I go, I better finish up reading my Camping for Dummies book because I want to make sure I get all the bases covered. And so you get down to the very end of the book and it says, things to watch out for. Like, wait a minute. Up until now, it's been all about the things you need and the enjoyment you're going to get out of it and, and, the, and the relaxation and, and just the, the renewal and, and the decompression you get by being able to experience nature and all its beauty and all the, all the stuff. Wait, what is this last chapter about? Stuff to watch out for. And you get down and you start reading this last chapter. And it says, now, things you may encounter while camping. You may encounter dangerous wildlife. You may encounter some bears or some snakes or some skunks or some javelinas or you name it. You, you might encounter some of these things. Now remember also to take your bug spray because you're going to experience mosquitoes and sand fleas and chiggers and all this other stuff. So make sure that you take your bug spray. Also remember to take sunscreen because if you're out very long, you may get sunburn which will decrease the enjoyment of your camping experience. Also, be careful on the trails because trails have many dangers, whether it's, it's logs that have fallen across a trail or whether it's loose rocks or whether it's creatures that are lying alongside the trail waiting for un, some, some unsuspecting camper to walk along or whatever the case may be, there are some dangers involved that you need to watch out for. And now if you encounter a bear out in the wild, here's what you do. And my solution is I run faster than the person I'm camping with. But beyond that, here are some things that you do. Or if you encounter this, or while if, if rivers or streams are swollen, be careful. And all these dangers and all these things, and you think, well, I'm not sure about this camping stuff. I'm going to have to rethink this. And so you sit there and you, and you read your camping book and you think, I'm, I'm going to start back to the beginning and I'm going to read my book again just to make sure I'm all in with this. And so you reread your camping book, you make new notes and you, and you add things and you, you add a line of, of notes and in the margin and stuff and you just continue to read through this book to make sure you're well versed in what you need to do. And so your neighbor says, you know, I haven't seen you go camping yet. Well, I'm still reading the book. I've got a whole library of books that I'm reading about camping before I go. Okay, that's cool. That's good to be, be well-versed and be, have a, a good knowledge and base of what you're doing. Well, a few weeks later, go, you know, go by. And neighbor says, well, I still haven't seen you go camping yet. Are you, are you changing your mind? Well, no, no, I'm still going to go. I'm still excited about going camping, I, but... You know, there's just some things I read that I want to make sure that I'm clear on before I, I, I continue to go. So, so this one week, you think, this is the weekend I'm going. And so you go out and you load all your stuff in the truck and you go to the grocery store and you buy $5,000 worth of groceries, most of which you're going to bring home with you. And you have plenty of water and you have everything you could possibly need all loaded in the truck and it's time to leave. And you think, wait, I want to check the book one more time. And so you go and sit down on the couch and you open up the book. And before you know it, two or three hours have passed and you've missed your window of opportunity to leave before dark. And now, well, I don't want to go tomorrow and set up for one day and blah, blah, blah. You know, and you just, you know, one thing after another. And you think, next week. Next week I'll go. So next week rolls around and, you know, it's just, you're just tired and you don't really feel like going this week. So I think I'm just going to sit on the couch and read my book again. 
And by now, the pages are tattered. There are notes everywhere. Some pages are falling out because you've read it so many times. And it doesn't matter because if pages do fall out, you've read it so many times, you've memorized what's on that page, so you can just go over it in your head and move on to the next page because you've seen it so many times. And your neighbor looks out and he sees your your truck sitting there in the driveway full of your camping gear and says, you know what? I saw the excitement. I saw how thrilled my neighbor was to go camping. And so I sacrificed. I spent a lot. I gave a lot to provide them, to equip them for this wonderful experience. I'm sad that they are not experiencing what I feel. I'm sad they're not being able to reap the benefit of what I've given them. And so after a while, and you kind of grow weary of the Facebook group, and you quit logging on, and you know, you've read all the books, and they start collecting dust on the shelves. Your tent has never been opened. The tank on your cook stove is still full of gas. Your coolers are spotless and clean because they've never been used. but you know the book from front to back. You know everything it says. You have everything memorized. You are fully equipped to experience this joy and this excitement. But you never step out and use it. How sad, how sad that is to have that experience. So I'm going to read you something right now. That you've heard a thousand times. This is one of those pages that you could tear out and know what it says anyway. See in Ephesians chapter 6, and I'll begin in reading in verse 10. Because Paul has written a letter to the church at Ephesus, and he's been encouraging them on, on knowing what their relationship with God is. He's been encouraging them on, on how to relate to each other. He's been encouraging them to stay strong in the, in, the, in the face of persecution. He's been giving them so many instructions. But listen to what he says here at the end. He says, finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Well, can I read this? I realize that God has us fully equipped. Matter of fact, if you look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul writes to Timothy there that the, 
that the, that the Bible is inspired. And, we, and by having the Bible, we are fully equipped, completely prepared for every good work. You know, God knows what the list is of what we need. And he doesn't leave anything out. He gives us everything we could possibly need. Because here's the thing. He doesn't expect us to sit on our couch and reread the book over and over and over while all our equipment is just sitting idly by. So he gives us all these elements. And if you take... Say, for example, when I was in, in high school, well, I played football. And you know what they gave us to play football in? A complete football uniform. Cleats for traction. We had our socks. We had our, our pants with the knee pads, the thigh pads, the hip pads, the, the butt pad. And, and then we had the little half t-shirt to keep our arms from getting raw from the shoulder pad straps and we had the shoulder pads and we had helmets we had forearm pads we had horse collar um, pads we had everything you could possibly mouth guards everything you could possibly need so what is expected of the football player when he's suited up well I'm just going to sit in the locker room read some books on football no, we, the reason we have this equipment is because what we're about to go do is going to be hard. It's going to be bruising. It's going to be taxing. It's going to be exhausting. Y'all, when I played football, even as padded up as I was, I fractured a vertebrae, dislocated the shoulder, and broke my hand. Not to mention other various and sundry bruises and bumps and cramps and one time, I, I got hit so hard, my helmet came loose, and a guy stepped on my face right there with his cleats. Now, I shouldn't have been on my back to begin with. That was my fault. But you know what? Well, you, don't, you don't suit up in all this gear just to sit around and contemplate what it represents. We spend all week preparing for game night. And game night was a battle. Game night was a challenge. Game night was when you put to use all the things that you prepared for up to that point. And we were fully equipped, and not just with the equipment, but with the knowledge and the practice and the skill to fulfill our requirements. So, I mean, it wouldn't be very appropriate to suit up a football team and then come game time, all the team is sitting in the locker room thinking, man, we sure are ready for this game, aren't we? And game time rolls around and they're thinking, you know, well, let's, let's reread the playbook. And game time is past and we're thinking, you know what, we'd be doing good if we were actually playing. You know, and I'll, what's, the, what's the purpose in that? We are fully equipped by God for the battle that we are to enter. Amen. We don't have to worry about, listen to this, a little bit, a little bit earlier in Ephesians. Listen, this is in chapter 4, verse, beginning in verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Look at the next sentence. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Do you see what that says? He said, I'm not, a, I'm not giving you all this. I'm not equipping you with all this so that you can come in and enjoy each other's company and say, aren't, aren't we fully equipped? Isn't it great to be one of God's people? Isn't it wonderful to be a Christian? Isn't it, isn't it just great? And we share this time together in the locker room and we, and we, we just spend time enjoying each other's company and reading the and please don't misunderstand me i encourage you to read the book every day so so don't don't misunderstand reading the book is important the purpose of what we're doing though is because we are fully equipped now not to come in here and be comfortable but to get out there and be beaten up and bruised and battered for the sake of jesus christ 
And let's face it, we're living in a world right now where if we go out and we share Jesus and we let our light shine, somebody is going to end up battered, bruised, and beat down. But we're equipped. We are prepared for that. We have everything we need. So I'm just going to say, oh, shame on us. Shame on us for sequestering Jesus in this building. Shame on us for getting together and saying, man, isn't this wonderful? We are Christians. We are so blessed. We are fully equipped for everything, but never getting beyond just reading what the book says. Never enjoying the practice of the camping. <clears throat> I heard a, a preacher one time, and, and I've, I've probably shared this with you at some point or another, but he said he told his daughter to go and clean her room. He said, I want you to go clean your room. Well, two hours later, she came back, and he said, is your room clean? And she said, no, it's not, Daddy. He said, well, why not? She said, because I went into my room and I sat and I thought, what does it mean to clean my room? And I pondered the concept of cleaning my room. And I got online and I, <clears throat> I read some articles about <clears throat> cleaning my room. And I called up some friends of mine and next Thursday we're going to meet and we're going to talk about cleaning our rooms. And he says, but did you clean your room? Well, no. He said, your task was to clean your room. Folks, God has given us a task. He has fully equipped us for that task. The cost, folks, was great. The cost was enormous. But through His love and His generosity, and his care for us. He paid the cost to equip us to every good work. And if we read this verse again in chapter 4, in verse 12 it says, For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I love that verse. Because it says each one of us is capable. Each one of us is fully equipped. And each one of us is expected to use that. Not just encouraged. Not just, you know, this is a suggestion. We're expected to use that. My encouragement to us folks is let's just don't get together and talk about how wonderful it is to, to, to go camping together. Let's don't just talk to each other about how wonderful it is to be a member of this body. Y'all, let's actually put that to practice and use the equipment that God has given us because we are equipped to do whatever he asks. He will not ask us to do things that we are not capable of doing because he gives us the capability. He gives us the equipment to do it. And so it's not for us to say, I'm going to go in and I'm going to get another, another chapter of the book and then I'm going to be fine. I'm going to go in this week and I'm going to get another, another dose of Camping for Dummies. That's going to be, I'm going to be good and never experience the, the joy of actually doing it. Now, I will tell you, I went camping last July and I had the wrong shoes. When I got home, my feet were so sore, I couldn't even walk. It was terrible. But the experience was great. The experience was fantastic. So everything that happens to us is not going to be fantastic, but the overall experience of being this person that God wants us to be, there is nothing to compare to that. That experience is going to be 
phenomenal. And let's face it, we're all, we're all just campers. We are all right now living in a tent. We're living in something temporary right now. And something eternal is waiting for us. And if we don't prepare ourselves for that, if we're satisfied, just think of what we're going to miss out on. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't hand somebody a shovel and ask them to drive a nail. Wouldn't hand somebody a crochet hook and ask them to hem a skirt. You wouldn't hand somebody the wrong tools and ask them to do a particular job. God has given us the right tools for the job He expects us to do. But we have to wield those tools. That's the expectation. It's what He wants from us. He's given us everything we need. Now what happens after that, that's up to us. How are we willing to use what God has equipped us with? So that's what I want to leave you with today. Just what, how are you using the equipment that God has given you? Are you taking full advantage of His generous, gracious gift or not? I encourage us to think about that, that this week. Pray about that this week. And let's pray that we can actually use the equipment he's given us. God bless you all. Have a good week.